It's our hope that tonight uh, you, you will be able to see two people who have sat where you sat, who have learned what you learned, and who have dreamt what you've dreamt, and have been able to take that somewhere. Len Amato is president of HBO Films uh, for Home Box Office, where he is responsible for overseeing the development and production of original HBO films for the network. With Amato at the helm since October 2008, HBO Films has garnered numerous awards and accolades, including 43 Emmy Awards, 12 Golden Globes um, for, H uh, for HBO Films overall. Amato is also a mentor on the most recent season of Project Greenlight. Uh, before joining HBO, he was president of Spring Creek Productions, as well as story editor for Robert De Niro's Tribeca Films. Prior to the film industry, he was a musician and actor, performing at such legendary genre, uh, venues as CBGB's and the La Mama Experimental Theater in New York City. Jeff Jewer began, began his path to filmmaking uh, with a short film that he wrote and directed. It resulted in a partial scholarship to Columbia College. Um, it was here that he really honed his interest in cinematography. His first major break came with Public Television's American Playhouse. This exposure took him to Los Angeles, where he was shooting such features as Dirty Dancing, Christopher Guest's first uh, feature, The Big Picture, which I believe every film student should see, uh, he, uh, with his frequent collaborator John Dahl on, among other films, The Last Seduction, as well as How Stella Got Her Groove Back, Joy Ride, and My Big Fat Greek Wedding. His television work includes HBO's Carnival, for which he received an Emmy Award for Cinematography, the pilot episodes of Grey's Anatomy, How to Get Away with Murder, two seasons of Dexter, um, Halt and Catch Fire for AMC, and Bessie for HBO, for which he received his second Emmy Award for Cinematography. In 2002, he was honored with membership in the American Society of Cinematographers and has won their award for Outstanding Cinematography three times. Was there originally an interest in going to television, or was it an area that you found yourself kind of moving into? Um, and do you see, as you know, as I think I've been perceiving, that, that those two art forms are merging and that the skill sets are, you gain as a filmmaker are just as valid in television? It's either no money or a lot of money. And the little mid-ground stuff is, with the great writing and the great acting and stuff, has, has been more television for sure. My trajectory was always with film, so um, I started via development. So I was a reader uh, in New York, um, reading books for studios, uh, writing coverage, um, so that studios could assess material and decide if they want to buy it. I was freelance. Um, and, uh, and then that eventually led to uh, working for De Niro and being a story editor again in development, developing scripts, looking for projects. That led to production, uh, producing. So the first film that I produced was, I guess you could say, for television, but I never thought of it like that. It was a movie for HBO. You're right that I don't see a distinction. I mean, uh, I mean if anything, it's really happening in television now. It's, it's much more cinematic and television and uh and and but i don't even think of it like that i just think of it as i don't think about school of film school of television i think of it as school of content you know i just think it's just about storytelling it doesn't really matter it's still narrative it's still storytelling and uh you know i've over the years i tend to look at that stuff as just means of distribution you know just means of delivery so that I would say the most important thing is really the story and the narrative and uh, television movies, just as long as you get the story out. Jeff, you obviously, your primary relationship on the set is usually with the director. Um, can you t just tell us a little bit about, as a DP, what you're looking for in a director and the kind of relationship you'd like to have with that person? Uh, a director will just let me do whatever I want. Those are the most successful, Ideally, right? <laughs> successful relationships. Uh, <clears throat> but that doesn't happen very often. Um, yeah, you want a, a creative partner. So, you know, you, when you interview, you vet the director as much as they're vetting you. Hopefully you can find somebody that will give you uh, some freedom and, uh, and, a creative, and a creative, but a creative vision. I mean, it's their vision. They're the person who's sort of driving 
the film. And that's, you, everybody on a film set craves that vision. They all want to know what to do. They're all there just to know what do you want? What's this world like? What are, what are we trying to say here? What's the message? So that's, that's a very valuable environment to be in. That's a great environment to be in as a creative person. Great. I want to open it up um, to any questions or uh, comments that anyone in the audience would like to make. Oh, that didn't take long. Why don't we start right here and then we'll just go to you. I want to. I want um, emotional engagement in the story. You know, I want to care. I need to care about what's going on. And, and if you care about what's going on, it doesn't really matter if the story's big or small. If you understand emotionally the stakes of the character, then even if it's about a small thing, you're invested in in wanting the person to succeed. You you want to be following great characters, and it, you know, and a lot of times. That's how you get a movie made. I'm looking at a variety of those things in, in assessing a script, and then, um, uh, and then whatever thoughts come along the way of how could it possibly be made better to emphasize certain things or, or maybe pull things out and, and help the clarity of it. The world's wide open now. I mean, people who make webisodes um, who get noticed or get a lot of hits on YouTube, they don't have agents. But guess what? There's a whole, whole school of people out there that notice that shit now. You're a writer, right? So, so I don't know why you have to go to L.A. To be, L.A., I think, is a terrible place to be a writer. Because write where you're comfortable and where, you, where the things are that you want to write about. The main thing is what you're writing, not, not where. There is a logic to... Well, shit, I might as well bite the bullet. Eventually, maybe I'd be going to L.A. anyway, so I'm young. Maybe I should pay my dues. Because wherever you go, if you stay in Chicago, you're going to pay your dues in Chicago. You're going to come up with a group of people in Chicago. If you go to New York, you're going to pay your dues in New York. You're going to come up with a group of people in New York. And if you go to L.A., you're going to pay your dues in L.A. Going to New York, um, you know, there was a city to deal with that was much bigger than just, you know, you, your own little thing because you just encountered so much shit on the street anyway, no matter what. You just had to be, like, in the moment, so. I came out to L.A. a few times, and I remember there was a gaffer uh, who was a friend of my girlfriend's at the time, and he said, do you want to do feature films? Do you want to do drama? I said, yeah, yeah, I want to do that. you got to come to L.A. I think for a cinematographer, because the infrastructure, at least at that time, was there. It's, it's, it's in a lot of places now, I think. But the core is, is still sort of there as far as the scale of what we're talking about, which is national TV and features and stuff for cinematography. You have to be there to be a part of that. And apparently the big lesson is follow women. <laughs> <laughs> the well, weather's nice, too. Or, yeah. or, or men. I mean, uh, whatever your thing is. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever. All the way in the back. <laughs> That's a good question. I have no idea. I, you know, I, I, the, visualizing the script is, is a big part of what you do as a cinematographer, sure. I trust those first instincts. When I read it and I see it, that's what I feel we should pursue. It's like a creative impulse to just see it in a certain way. I'll try to see something different than the way it's been done. Like, here's the cliche, but maybe there's another way to, to visualize a scene. There's a million different ways to to shoot a scene, but you want to know that one way, and the director hopefully provides that. I'll have my idea, but they'll have their idea. They usually win, but hopefully they'll want to hear my idea as well, and then you come up with something sometimes better than what you had thought of in the first place. Let me just add to that, 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 that you know, where you put the camera is really important. There's a real art form to staging. Staging a scene is like one of the absolute most important things. It seems like an obvious thing, but um, I remember that when a filmmaker that I really admire said it to me, it was like a light bulb went off, and it's like you kind of know it, but when you realize how much emphasis people who are great put on it, it kind of makes you want to look at it again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, standing back there?
Tenacity. I mean, that's one thing. Tenacity. You know, just hanging in there and believing in what you're right. What believing you're doing. Yourself. I mean, actually, a lot of people that are far more talented than than me. I don't know, Jeff. I don't know if he ever hung around with anybody who's more talented than him. But I do think that if if you don't like strike gold when you're young, which sometimes happens, then once you get a certain point, it's really about how long can you hang in there and believe in what you're doing. Absolutely. Just to stick with it and believe in yourself. and It'll go up and down. I got, I got some early breaks and it was great. I thought that's the way it's going to go. And then it goes down and then you come back and forth and, and you just try to maintain and stay with it and believe. I don't know what else I would be doing. This is it for me. This was the thing I wanted to do with my life and I was lucky to find it early on in high school. Okay. Um, all right, right there. Roddy. Mm -hmm. Always the same thing, looking for fresh voices, unique voices, unique perspective, um, you know, personal engagement in the stories that, that people want to tell. This is a cliche, but it's true passion. Um, that's what everybody's looking for. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah, Dexter, for instance, I had been going for, I think, six years at that point. Romeo Tyrone had been shooting it. It's beautiful, amazing. One of the first uh, full HD shows, I think, one of the first that, that started out. And I, I, told, I pitched them that I could give them the, the show that, that they had already, the best of it, and, but make it be, even better. And, uh, and they seemed to go for it. It was difficult for them because they went from a tape-based sort of a whole infrastructure to digital based and uh, it cost them a little money but I think they were happy with it. Um, you know, you, I've done things like that where I've come in and shot second unit for people and stuff. It's a bit of like forensic cinematography. It's kind of fun, it's challenging. You go, okay, what did they do here? How did they do it? Sometimes you can know the cinematographer, you can talk to them, sometimes not, and you have to just figure it out. It's fun, I like it, but you can second guess too much. You have to trust your own instinct. If you, you can get in trouble second guessing too much and not trusting your own instinct. You have to kind of absorb what they've done and then do your own, have your own voice in it and, and do your own work that you feel comfortable with. Right here. I don't think it's so much that um, that uh, we're, we're so different from anybody. Um, you do have to have a little luck, I think. I mean, it's not that it's not that we haven't worked hard, but there's a lot of people that work hard, right? So some people catch a break, some people don't catch a break. There is something to be said about being in the right place at the right time. I think that you know. So just to answer your question, you know, one version would be that. Um, I, I wanted something, even if I didn't know what it was, and that I was willing to keep chasing it, even if I didn't, even if I wasn't sure what I was chasing sometimes. So meaning that that I didn't stop. And in other words, I kept taking risks, or or if not a risk, I kept trying to um, assess an opportunity and take the opportunity. It was a, just that need to express myself. Um, I was a quiet kid, but I had a lot that I felt I needed to say. I needed an outlet for it. And when I got a camera in high school, that a, you know, film camera, that was it. That was the thing. I knew that was what I wanted, how I wanted to speak out. And with cinematography, I, I, you, know, you have to work with other people, other people's stories, but you can still send a message. So every day that you work, you're sending a message. It's that belief in yourself to, to want to do it, to have to do it. Okay, well, let me thank, first off, Lenamato and Jeff Jewer, and then thank you to all of you for coming. <laughs>